What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about Facebook. The company has just released its Q4 2018 and full year financial report. So we're going to go through all of the numbers. I uh, listened to the conference call. I'm going to give you guys a full update on Facebook's business. But first, let's take a look at the stock chart of Facebook to give you a little context on the story here. So Facebook, you know, they IPO'd in about 2012, 40 bucks a share. The stock kind of goes down to about 20 bucks. There's this whole down in the dumps about can they transition to mobile? Long story short, Facebook crushes it. Since then, transitions to mobile, turns into an ATM cash printing machine. The stock went to almost 200 per share, almost 10 bagger in like five years. But then in 2018, we had this slide, you know, huge data privacy concerns uh, emerging about Facebook, sort of in a 180 in the public sentiment around Zuckerberg from genius boy visionary to evil guy who messed up our election. What is he doing with our data? Cambridge Analytica. And so Facebook has been through a lot of turmoil, but recently there's been the bounce. The stock has bounced back from those lows, um, a huge rally after earnings based on these numbers. So now let's go into the numbers and figure out what is going on uh, with people's understanding of the companies. This is Facebook's uh, revenue and operating income on a quarterly basis. And as you can see, there's generally a spike in Q4, seasonally strong business there. Um, they had a new record for revenue and pro uh, profit during the quarter, 16.9 billion in revenue, 7.8 billion in profits. So uh, a pretty good quarter from uh, Facebook just at, at face value there. Now I'm zooming into the view of just Q4 numbers because this is going to highlight the trend of what I'm looking for. And the biggest thing that's going on about Facebook, the result of the, this whole Cambridge Analytica scandal means the company is focused on or first has had to hire a lot more people, um, which has greatly increased costs to be able to manage, you know, all of the content on their platform to make sure there's a lot more, uh, you know, resources around safety and privacy. So they're hiring a lot more people. The second thing that's been going on with their business, they've been sacrificing growth opportunities and revenue opportunities to make sure the platform's safer and encourage what they want on the platform. Like they're reducing viral video posts, this combination of slower revenue growth and increased cost is really the trend at Facebook. So now let's go back to these quarterly numbers. And if we zoom into revenue growth, you know, we had a 47% growth rate from Q4 to Q, uh, from Q4 2016 to Q4 2017. That slowed to a 30% from uh, Q4 2018 to Q4 2017. So we have, you know, a very, it's still growing at 30%, which is great, but we have a significant deceleration in Facebook's growth rate. And what's even worse about this, or or more interesting, I guess, is, is this, earnings, uh, this earnings situation. So we have, you know, 61% growth in the company's earnings from Q4 2017 to Q4 2016, expanding operating leverage, but then just 6% growth from Q4 2017 to Q4 2018. So the earnings of this company year over year has just fallen off the cliff. The margins are decreasing. The revenue growth is taking a hit. And this is why investors were concerned. Um, but the reason why the stock bounced back, that bounce that I showed you was because they did, uh, you know, the, the results weren't as bad as people were expecting. If we move to the annual uh, results, view. You can see this is what Facebook had done through 2017. Pretty beautiful to look at this, you know, just booming revenue and profits. This is what I was expecting for 2018, which I thought was actually conservative. But, you know, throughout 2018, the whole scandal comes out. We realize that Facebook has to hire all these new people. Their revenue growth is going to slow. This is what they actually reported, 56 billion and 25 billion in profits. So slightly below my estimates. But when you look at it like this, it's like, honestly, Facebook didn't have that bad of a year. They added 15 billion in revenue. They added 5 billion in profits. They're still printing an absurd amount of money. I mean, I think they're doing just fine. But um, the, the trajectory in my understanding of Facebook has changed. And I think the entire company has been re-rated as way less of a growth story than it once was. And that's why the market has brought down those shares. Let me explain. This has been my estimations for Facebook's growth rate from 2018 to 2020, um, you know, before this whole 2018 thing started. And this is what the actually reported. So when I was estimating 43% growth, they came in at 37% growth. And I've had to take down my 2019 estimates from 38% to 25%. I mean, if you just toggle in between these charts, you can see there's just a huge difference here um, and, and just a dramatic slowdown to a mid 20% growth rate by the 2020s. And, and this is just what I'm estimating sort of based on me interpreting between the lines of management's guidance. And the other thing that's going on besides slowing revenue growth, like I said, is decreasing operating margins. So Facebook, this is my old estimates, you know, they were, they were pumping out almost 50% operating margins. That means for every dollar in revenue, 50 cents was a profit. This is, you know, some of the highest operating margins in the entire world. Facebook was one of the most profitable companies on the planet, but now their operating margin is, is decreasing. And I estimated 46%. It really came in at 45% in 2018. And now I'm estimating, you know, 
big contraction in the operating margin in 2019 and then stabilizing in 2020 because um, it sounds like 19 they're going to have these accelerating costs. So plugging all those estimates into an annual uh, financial projection, this is what we're looking at. Still very strong revenue growth, but earnings growth in 2019 stalls out to just about 10% there um, and then reaccelerates in 2020. So what is happening? And we're going to go into more why there's a reacceleration in 2020 in a second. But if we look at the valuation of that based on my 2019 estimates, we're looking at 2.8 billion shares, which is actually substantially lower from like the three or 3.1 billion shares of my, my earlier model because Facebook has been buying back a ton of stock. Um, so that has decreased their share count. Anyway, 2.8 billion times 170 per share, looking at 476 billion market cap uh, times 70 billion in revenue. We're looking at, or divided by 70 billion in revenue, we're looking at 6.8 times price sales, 476 billion divided by 26.6 billion in earnings. EBIT, we're looking at 18 times price EBIT. So almost seven times price sales, 18 times price earnings for my estimate of 2019 financials. Now, before we get into whether I think that's cheap or expensive, let's take a look at the conference call notes, or I want to run through the, the notes that I took on the conference call. And so um, it starts out with Zuckerberg doing his opening remarks. And what I thought is interesting is he doesn't just highlight the user data that Facebook has. He also highlights that the overall families of Facebook, not just the Facebook app, have 2.7 billion monthly active users and 2 billion daily active users. That's on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook Messenger combined. If we go to hypercharts, we can take a look at their DAU data for the overall just Facebook platform. And you can see that it was another strong quarter. I mean, they had continued continued growth in uh, their overall user base. What I thought was super interesting and impressive was that US and Canada, which is their most profitable region, although it looks like it's flatlining there, if you look closely, they had 186 million DAUs up from 185 million. That 186 million was a record. So we've seen their their DAU number here in the US and Canada totally flatlined for some time, but now finally start to tick back up um, in this quarter. So I think that was huge, huge news um, for Facebook is that their US business is not dying. Um, anyway, continuing with Zuckerberg's opening remarks, he says that 30,000 people um, are working on safety on the platform, up from 10,000 a couple years ago. That's all those people they hired. Um, they're really working on more, of making more ephemeral products, so your so your content doesn't stick around forever. And that's you know basically continuing to copy Snapchat. Um, and then they say in that light, I, Instagram Stories has 500 million daily active users. Um, they're going to be rolling out several new experiences this year, including payments on WhatsApp and certain countries, which is linked potentially to their stable coin, which I made videos about. So that is very interesting to hear Zuckerberg mention that as well. Um, a lot of commerce experiences around Instagram going to be developed this year. We know e-commerce is a huge white space for Instagram, and, and, and now it looks like they're doubling down on making a move there in 2019. Um, additionally, they're going to continue to make investments to improve the safety of the platform. Then San Sheryl Sandberg comes on, the uh, infamous COO, um, and then she says that 90 small businesses, uh, 90 million small businesses use their product. Um, they have 2 million advertisers on their stories platform. They also were like making it very easy to automate different ads from other types of, uh, you know, Facebook's news, news feeds ads and Instagram news feeds ads and making it very easy to adapt those to stories ads. And this is what I wanted to highlight going back to my chart of, of Facebook's financial annual financials. Why is there flat revenue here and then accelerating revenue growth? So if you go back to 2012, you'll notice that earnings took a huge hit. And that was right when the stock took a huge hit as well, because there was this huge transition in Facebook's business model from desktop ads to mobile ads. Now the company has a huge majority of mobile ads. They killed this transition. It's printing them billions. Well, now the next Facebook advertising medium transition is underway. And that is what is, is slowing the growth, which is they're switching from news feed ads to stories ads, Instagram stories ads, where they say they have 500 million DAUs. And it sounds like they're just ramping up that advertising business. And that is the big new growth engine for Facebook's uh, you know core business, which is ads, is, is this new stories medium. And so that is why you're seeing seeing flat earnings growth in 2019 as they sort of switch and transition into stories. And then if that transition works, that's where the continued and accelerated earnings growth in 2020s comes from. So in many ways, when we go back to this valuation of Facebook at 18 times earnings, you know, pr very similar to the market, despite this being a fascinating tech company, you know, there's not much growth priced in. So I would, my understanding of how the market is pricing Facebook and what's happening here is the market is skeptical of this transition to stories. And if you believe that Facebook can successfully transition to stories, they can continue growing their business um, across these platforms, then I think Facebook is a steal at 18 times earnings. And that's not to mention that they have 40 billion in cash. So they have, you know, eight to 
10% of their market cap in cash. If I take that out, this multiple goes to like 16. So I think you have a, a very a business that's priced for very low to, to almost no growth. Last couple notes from the conference call, the CFO says they're actually planning on phasing out all those daily active user and monthly active user metrics that I'm showing you, um, which are just a Facebook's platform. And they want to start transitioning to metrics about their overall platform, which is why they've already started hinting at like that 2.7 billion number, MAU number, et cetera. So I think that's interesting to their disclosure change. The other interesting thing is payments revenue and other revenue was a huge bright spot for Facebook this quarter. Still a very tiny piece of the business, but huge growth this quarter. And the reason why they said is because of uh, sales of the portal actually going above expectations, which they must have really low expectations, and the Oculus Go. And so I think it's interesting that Facebook's hardware products are actually accelerating that other revenue line. And as we also see payment services come online on WhatsApp next year, I think we could see Facebook and maybe even e-commerce with Instagram, like Facebook's other revenue line is actually going to start to to add to the growth as well. And Facebook's going to migrate away from just being an advertising business where it looks like they're they're starting to. The CFO also goes on to say their growth rates decelerating throughout 2019. Um, They're growing expenses 40 to 50% this year. So that's why I have those, those flat earnings. Um, I thought it was interesting. They mentioned they're building 18 to 20 billion uh, worth of CapEx uh, next year to build mostly data centers. So Facebook is spending tens of billions per year on data centers. Just overall in the data privacy concerns, Zuckerberg in the Q&A has this interesting note that's like, you know, you know, then they kind of ask him like, how are you going to sh- reshape the brand of Facebook and like really, you know, lean into this era of privacy and safety? And he says like, look, that's what we're doing with our product roadmap. We're switching to a fem- type content, things that disappear because people are concerned about privacy and they want more ephemeral content. And so that's the way we're leaning, you know, so Facebook is sort of designing their content roadmap to, to make it easier to, to cater to these safety and privacy concerns. So that's my wrap up on Facebook's Q4 2018 results. You know, revenue growth and earnings growth are slowing, but not much, not as bad as the market thought. So the stock is bouncing. I think this, you know, frankly, as just a financial taking my morals out of the equation, you know, my gut instinct says Instagram is a juggernaut that's not stopping. E-commerce on Instagram is going to be huge. Facebook is going to be able to transition their advertising business to stories, a lot of it on Instagram, and that advertising business is going to be fine. Then you have e-commerce another growth opportunity. We have the Oculus Go, VR still simmering on the back burner that has huge potential long-term. I mean, the Facebook portal, which I think is weird and super creepy, is apparently doing well and already growing their other revenue. We have the cryptocurrency uh, for payments on WhatsApp that's getting ready to launch. Like I think Facebook, there's, and then the other thing I didn't even talk about is Facebook Watch, which is the YouTube competitor, which I thought was a joke, but they seem like they're very bullish on watch. And actually one of my favorite shows very random tidbit story right now. Uh, Real Bros of Simi Valley, which is like, don't judge me, like the dumbest show. It's like Workaholics meets Silicon Valley. Anyway, I think it's a hilarious, dumb YouTube show started by one of my favorite YouTuber, YouTube comedians. And it was getting like hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. And then Facebook Watch, it sounds like paid just basically like fa- contacted that YouTuber um, and Jimmy Tatro was like, Jimmy, you should just build season or you should just do season two of Real Bros of Simi Valley instead of on your YouTube channel on our Facebook watch platform and we'll just pay you for that content. So Facebook was literally looking at the free data that YouTube gave them about which was an amazing show from an amazing creator and they just funded him and got that f- season two content exclusively on Facebook watch. So me as a consumer, all of a sudden my favorite show that was on YouTube is now on Facebook watch and now for the first time ever, I'm watching Facebook watch. So personally, I just want to throw that anecdote out there that I've noticed that Facebook watch is actually gaining my viewership hours. And I think their strategy is going to work. You know, I think everybody has their weird little cool YouTuber show that they love and they follow. And if that YouTuber starts getting paid more from Facebook and puts their content on Facebook, we're all going to go watch it. So I think the barrier that YouTube has, um, I I think the moat is actually less than I thought. And it's interesting that to me that YouTube is letting Facebook poach all their, some of their best creators with, and get exclusive content. Anyway, so bullish on Facebook watch too. The point being is I think I'm very bullish on what Facebook could be. I think Zuckerberg's super sharp. I think the stock is actually very cheaply priced based on, based on the growth potential of this firm. But on the flip side, you know, I don't like investing in things that I don't believe in that I don't think are building the world I want to be a part of. And I, you know, I, use Instagram. Hyperchange has Instagram. I'm watching Facebook watch. So I use Facebook's products, but like, I don't know, there's this whole notion of how they handled the election interference and the way they handle data and privacy concerns. Like, I just don't feel like they have the users back at the end of the day. They just seem like a sketchy company that I don't trust. And so I don't really like Facebook as a company, but 
I don't know. It's important to be able to separate your personal opinions about the company versus your financial analysis. So I would never personally touch or own the stock, at least for now, because I just don't really like the business they're in. But this is an interesting company. They're pumping out billions in cash, and it looks like they're going to keep doing that for a long time to come. So this is HyperChange. That's Facebook's Q4 2018 earnings recap. Definitely check out our Patreon page and consider signing up for the newsletter. Um, if you like HyperChange, huge shout out to everyone who already does. You're funding the channel. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.